Hi everyone, hope you're doing great. Thank you so much for joining in for the session and thank you so much for signing up. So today we are going to talk about a very, very interesting topic. Can performance testing be done manually? Well, if you are a performance tester or tester in general, you would have definitely had this question in your mind at some point. So let's look if it is really possible or not and what are the best practices to follow. So before we move forward, I just wanted to introduce myself. So I'm a QA and a performance architect in an MNC. I have, a, I have about 15 years of uh, IT experience and I am a technical writer, speaker, and I've also judged a couple of hackathons. And I've also found an association called American Association of IT Professionals. Uh, we are about 880 people uh, strong at this point. Uh, please do go check out, um, follow and be part of it. We are doing wonderful events there. We are collecting articles for our journal, so it will be published pretty soon. Uh, you have time till August 5th to submit it. So even before we talk about performance testing can be done manually or not, uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, let's try to understand what testing is all about. There are plenty of testing types, but broadly they are classified into three. First one starting the manual testing. So when I say manual testing, as the name itself suggests, you are testing the application manually. You are going, logging in and trying to ensure each and every functionality is working fine. Uh, the advancement of that is an automation testing. You would do somewhat similar, but you will be using an automated scripts here. This will enable you to do your testing much more faster, efficiently, and you can do a lot of regression. So here you'll be creating scripts, be it to Selenium, and uh, trying to validate the functionality of an application. So the last type is performance testing. So performance testing is an area which is a little more complicated. It's also called as non-functional testing. So here the actual performance of an application when it comes to the speed, the responsiveness, um, how much users it can handle at a time, all this will be measured. So these are all the different types of testing. Now let's look a little deeper into what are the different types of performance testing. Again, performance testing has its own life cycle. Uh, if we specifically talk about different types of tests, uh, there are majorly divided into these five, load testing, stress, spike, soak, and volume. Each test has its own purpose. So in load testing, we'll be testing the actual load on the system to see how the system behaves. Stress is where we actually stress the system a little beyond the expected load and try to see if there is an unexpected uh, load on the system, how it will behave. In spike testing, we normally introduce uh, spikes in the volume and see how the application can behave if, if there is an unexpected spike in the volume. And soak testing is also like a duration test where you would uh, run it for a prolonged amount of time and see what is the impact on your application. And volume testing is one more type of testing where you will check the actual volume of the system. So basically performance testing has its own types and uh, it has its own flavors. So now that we know what are the different testing types are and specifically what performance testing types are, let's move forward and try to understand what key performance indicators we normally capture. So when I said you will have to ensure the application performance is optimal, so the, there are a few set of metrics which we always try to capture. You cannot really list out each and every one of the metric, but few of the major performance indicators are as follows. Uh, transaction response time, uh, you definitely want to make sure uh, how much time it is taking for your transaction to complete. Throughput, amount of work being done and server utilizations, um, CPU memory network, how your operating system is behaving. How is your thread count error, garbage collection, uh, hits per second, active sessions, thread pool. So there are plenty. So these are all the key performance indicators uh, will tell you whether your application is good in terms of performance or is there is any opportunity to tune it to, to achieve better. Or whenever you're uh, capturing your non-functional requirements or performance testing requirements, you would have certain targets to meet or a goal to meet. Uh, if you are meeting or not, um, you will be able to figure out from these uh, and these are like uh, the major indicators will tell you how your overall application performance uh, is behaving. So now that we know what uh, testing, what is performance testing, what we actually look in performance testing, I would like to give a moment for all of you to think 
manually can we really do performance testing or not or is there a way or a workaround for it let's move forward so general general terms performance testing is not advised to be done manually why because you cannot simulate the actual production user load at all so you can gather 20 30 50 people along with you to test it manually your application but in real world it could be in hundreds or thousands how would you even do that so it's practically impossible for you to create the actual scenario and also i just talked about the different types of performance testing so all the different types like a spiking it suddenly or doing a stress test it's really difficult to coordinate and it is next to impossible when you do it in manual testing and also in performance testing we always have an option to parameterize and pass different data sets and we can go with multiple iterations so we are really testing your application with variety of data uh, that is something limited when it comes to manual testing and imagine you are testing it manually and whatever the response comes and for some reason the response time is high you would have no clue what's happening behind the scene why exactly the response time is high so you will never be able to understand that end to end and you will not be able to effectively monitor client and server metrics you can still do it through tools but if you take only the manual testing practices um, these are all not included so you would never know if if your application uh, servers are running above threshold if that is causing any issue and definitely when you do manual testing there are a lot of human errors which you cannot neglect at all so basic rule of thumb performance testing cannot be done manually should not be done manually even if you do it it is very very difficult to conclude that as a valid test so that's being said is there still any possibility of doing performance testing manually well well there are some rare conditions even though it's not advised but if you have to do manually your performance testing there are few ways you can really try to make the best use of it let's explore the ways there are three ways i would like to present so first one is very manual intense labor intense uh, testing uh, like you will have to gather the x number of uh, resources with you and everyone should have access to the application and timer with their hand i've heard instances from my seniors where they have actually done this a couple of times and uh, so what what really happens is each of you each of the resources go and manually navigate the exact functionality and try to record the time and uh, once the, the time is recorded and once the time is recorded you collate all the end to end time from all of them and try to build a case of what will be the performance of an application again this is one of the uh, difficult ways to do manually the performance testing but it is possible up to some extent so the second way is uh, when you open your application in chrome you can just do a right click uh, you can select an option of inspect and uh, click on the network tab there you will see the actual uh, interaction of your browser so once it is open then probably you can navigate around your application what it really does is it will show you the time it has taken for the page to load. So this is one of the important metric you can capture, make a note of it and probably use it for your final results. And there is one more way. There are some third party tools these days like a web page loader or GeoKeeper where you can actually go and give the URL of your application. What it really does is try to simulate the load from a different geographical location and try to come up with what is the uh, response time for that page. So you will have some level of performance from a different location and this is something you can probably make use of it. Again, there, there would be definitely restrictions when it comes to your company uh, due to the firewall and not all websites will be able to easily access them. In such cases, probably you can also utilize the Chrome extension. Uh, it is called Lighthouse and even you can run it from uh, the inspect right click and inspect you can do that um, so these are a couple of ways possibly you can explore uh, to make some sense out of the performance testing when you do manually 
So there are some key takeaways I want every one of you to carry from this session. And those are performance testing is really crucial for your application stability. So there will never be a situation where your application is not performance stable and it has gone to a production and it will be a success. So first and foremost, it is crucial for performance testing to be done by the professionals. And performance test is definitely has its own life cycle. It has uh, different stages to go through and it requires really a skilled resources to evaluate system performance. Uh, the real challenge is not evaluating the performance. The challenge is when you see performance issues, how would you go about fixing them? And what level of uh, brainstorming you can do, troubleshooting you can do, and uh, information you can provide your developers. So work together and fix them. So performance testing has its own skill sets. There are tools, specific tools being used uh, and programming language uh, efficiency is required for it. And again, just a basic rule, no matter how useful your application is or how wonderfully it is built, uh, if it cannot serve all user, then it will fail. So imagine how many times you have opened a website and it, it takes forever to load. If it takes five seconds, six seconds, then you don't want to hang on. You just, you just move on from it. So you would never, you would not stay and wait for the application to load. So that's exactly what will be the impact. If you end up creating an application, which is not uh, performance evaluated, then end users will start seeing these performance issues, then they will just move on. So it's going to impact the business and the product and also the revenue. So never do performance testing manually. There are only few exceptions where we have taken the route of doing it uh, manually or through certain tools. Uh, examples are shift left testing or we call it as early performance testing where you're not really built out uh, the actual performance scripts and your application is not stable enough to be performance tested. There you can utilize such uh, early performance testing measures. You can manually try to navigate, understand how the system is behaving with single user. So that is valuable. So there you can utilize such thing. So there you can actually utilize uh, manually doing some performance uh, evaluation, but as a whole performance testing purely done from a manual um, testing point of view, uh, it's never going to be successful. I have also done a previous session uh, on shift left performance testing, uh, how you can approach and what are the ways you can make it successful. So I would recommend please go ahead and check it out. So that's being said, thank you so much for joining today. I know it's a short 15 minutes lightning session. So idea is to provide you a thought on the different topics. Please uh, feel free to write in the comments if uh, if you have ever done manual performance testing or what are your views on it or if if there are any other ways you think can be done and also um, please feel free to connect in linkedin uh, i have my handle in front of you and also do follow our company page we have a great session coming up this friday where i will be interviewing an uh, industry expert uh, who has a great knowledge on autonomous vehicles so now that we know the performance testing when it comes to software uh, how would things work in autonomous vehicles or electric vehicles? Those are very fascinating. So we'll be discussing more on that. So please sign up. Uh, see you all on Friday. Thank you.